module 10 moments normality tests and outliers section 3 outliers so what these outliers are we are going to discuss in this session outliers are simply an extraordinarily high or low value in the normally distributed data set so remember these are only for the normally distributed the bell shape distributions abnormally high or abnormally low scores are or the values are known as uh, you know the outliers outliers might be arise due to several reasons so how come the outliers form so it could be mere chance so that is why uh, it is very difficult it tricky to know is it really an outlier or is it actually uh, you know uh, merely chance so the outlier has come or not it could be a mistake as well so either during uh, the experiment or during the data entry for example instead of uh, entering 11 somebody typed a mistake it instead of 11 it is 111 so 111 so it, it becomes an outlier in that sense as well so you have to detect these outliers using formal statistical tests and remove it uh, to before going for any data analysis so so it could also be because the distribution is not exactly gaussian at all so it should be something like a log normal distribution so in that case there will be definitely an outlier as part of the log normal distribution characteristic so if you call it as an outlier that is a mistake that you are going to do that let us uh, do this uh, simple exercise inspect this picture above so you can see this picture uh, it has got uh, 18 data set here right so on the upper panel you will see that uh, the sample size is very less only 5 while the lower one the sample size is large and still can you spot some outlier so outlier means that it is actually um, extraordinary uh, high value or large value uh, lo small value so basically the outlier is like odd one out so these are nothing but column scatter graph so each dot indicates uh, you know each elements of your uh, measurement so that means each value so if you see one dot which is far away from the rest of the cluster so that is called outlier so you might think that there are few outliers in it so obviously uh, you know on the top panel the second one and second from the last you think that it is an outlier so if you subjectively look you know uh, uh, this the screen and also in the lower panel the third one looks like an outlier to me if you look at that is it outlier or not but for your surprise these are none of these are outliers so because these are all sampled from a perfectly normal gaussian distribution so these are subsets sampled from a gaussian so these are not uh, you know outliers at all so it is definitely it's not a nice idea to trust your eye trust your uh, intuition to decide is it really an outlier or not so never remove outliers subjectively or ad hoc removal is wrong it can also be termed as cheating or uh, you know it is basically a scientific misconduct because we tend to remove the outliers that affirms to our uh, you know our what the hypothesis I we would like to prove it so that kind of ad hoc removal of outlier is not recommended at all we tend to subjectively label values as outliers to get the results that we want you know that is exactly that is a problem here so it is a form of cheating if you remove the outliers that uh, you know whatever the outliers that you would like to remove it so human brain is very good at seeing the patterns you know while not so good at seeing or recognizing random scatter for example when i went to antarctica recently as part of the Indian mission to Antarctica, I have seen several different kinds of uh, huge iceberg, massive iceberg, most of which had blue color. So these icebergs have, you know, by looking a few iceberg, I thought like, oh, it looks like a man, you know, or a woman, you know, or some, you know, I thought I saw one interesting iceberg that looks like a man looking through a telescope to the sky. So all these are patterns you know these are nothing but artifacts of human uh, brain and these are you know in psychology there is a term called pareidolia seeing these patterns for example you can see a man on a toaster you know tossed of bread you can see the face of a man or if you look at the clouds you can see that pattern or in this figure you know just a screw you know uh, the, the first one is a screw while the second one is just a building you can see the eyes in it or the third one is very very uh, you know uh, everybody knows about it it's nothing but our moon so it depends on how you look at the moon you can see either a rabbit the moon rabbit or you can see a man uh, the face of a, a human being on the moon so these are all called pareidolia so the caution is that never remove outlier from your notebook 
So it's very important the raw data has to be preserved and the raw data should contain the outlier. So if you remove it or you erase the outlier in your notebook that is that constitutes to uh, a, you know data manipulation which is an academic offense, a serious academic offense. So even in the publication it should be clearly stated that how many outliers were removed from the data set and what the the criterions to identify these outliers. So if you have used some test like Grubbs test or the route method, you have to clearly specify these methods were used and this many outliers had been removed, you know, and without which uh, uh, this, uh, you know, that is actually again that is a kind of a cheating, you know, that you should never do that. So a few respected statisticians believe that the outlier should never be removed. It's a form of cheating. So, uh, you know, the, the, uh, there are actually respected statisticians, uh, they don't have the uh, agreement. You know, the, some well respected statisticians say that outlier should never be removed. So, yeah. Uh, but it looks like a consensus seems to be emerging that uh, the ad hoc uh, outlier removal, that means subjective removal, is wrong. But post hoc removal is accepted. So post hoc removal means that as part of the experimental design itself, you specify that this method we will be using for the outlier removal and just perform the that test uh, once you have the data. So uh, you know, and then accept the whatever that uh, test says. So for example, if I do that uh, route method and say that this many values are outlier, then we subjectively select these values. That is wrong. We have to accept or. Uh, you know, uh, we have to accept the route method of course, there is no other choice because that has been specified as part of your experimental design. Well, before performing the outlier test, you know, if you suspect that it is an outlier, so before even performing the test, you have to do a lot of interesting, uh, uh, you know, uh, look up, you have to check what is actually so special about this rating. So was there any problem while performing the experiment? So you have to check the notebook, for example, a spike, you know, in the electro, uh, the, you know, the, the, for example, uh, chromatography, if you are running, you heard some spurt noise and exactly at that time you see that this abnormal result. So in that case, you can simply remove it, you know, outlier. So uh, that is what you can do that. So recheck the data, any issues with the data entry, you know. So uh, the, it could be like a transposed digits or shifted decimal point or the software code, all these are uh, the, the possible sources of the outliers in the data set. You know, transposed data in the sense that uh, transposed, uh, you know, digits for example, instead of as I told you 11, you write 3 1, so 111. So those are transposed digits. So the shifted decimal point means instead of uh, putting 19.08, uh, you put 9.908. So it is a transposed decimal. So you have to do that. So the first one is also extremely important. For example, while while doing a, uh, you know while doing a, a filtration, a media filtration, then you saw a lot of leak, and that do correspond to the outlier that you got. Then you can just redo that experiment to get rid of that outlier. Now the third point is that does the extreme value came from a different organism or a biological sample? So in that case, it is extremely interesting. You know, you should never uh, overlook the outliers in that sense. So it could be uh, it could be really interesting. So if, for example, if you are screening different uh, algal sample for anti-cancer potential, you are getting almost uh, the same mean for uh, like for example 999 sample or you are getting a, a almost a, a not significant departure from the mean but one sample you are getting an extremely high IC50 value. So in that case definitely that sample is maybe uh, truly potent anti-cancer who knows it. So you will have to uh, you know uh, analyze it more it, it could be truly interesting data. This is exactly what happened when ozone hole was detected by Dobson spectrometer above the Haley station in Antarctica. So before this ozone hole was detected, the satellite data uh, that did say that there is actually uh, the ozone, you know, ozone hole is depleting significantly. But then the software thought that it is an outlier and that has been removed. It. So now that we know it was a mistake, it was not an outlier. While uh, you know it has been uh, uh, after the you know the Dobson spectrometer readings confirms that the whole hall is true. So the removal of the outlier by that software uh, in the American software that did it is wrong. So simply removing the outlier is not a good idea at all. 
So, what are the formal tests to detect the outliers? So, outlier detection tests are not supported in Excel, unfortunately. So, you have to go with uh, another paid software like you know GraphPad Prism or SPSS. So, two of the commonly used outlier tests are one is called GRUPS test. So, it can detect only one outlier. And the another method is called route method, so which can detect more than one outlier together. So the GRUPS test works like you know they calculate the uh, the difference between extreme value and the mean of all the values. You know, so then it actually see that. So your value is actually within falls within two sigma or not. So if it doesn't fall within two sigma, that is the standard deviation, then that means it might be an outlier. So that is how that GRUPS test work. While in the case of route method, you know, it is much better than uh, the, the GRUPS test if you have multiple, uh, you know, outliers. So, in a way, it is hard to say that your data set has only one outlier or more than one outlier. As I told you, subjective uh, interpretation is wrong, it has to be objective. So, in that, uh, that is one reason that many people say that a GRUPS test is inferior to the route method. So, always go with the route method. So, if you are unsure of how many, uh, you know, how many uh, outliers do your data set has. So, this screenshot is that of the, the GRUP, uh, you know, the, the GraphPad Prism software. And as I told you, there is a special video available on how to perform the outliers, how to detect the outliers by the GRUPS as well as um, the route method inside the graph pad prism. Please watch that video as well. So, as you can see in this screenshot, so out detect outlier is one option. If you click new analysis in the graph pad prism um, main interface, then there are two, uh, you know, these two tests uh, will come up in the pop up window. You have to choose appropriately whichever the test would you like to perform. Then the results will be displayed. So, the result will say that you know the first result will be the cleaned data in which the outliers have already been removed. Then second uh, sheet of the result window will be uh, you know uh, which are these outliers. So, which are the serial number of these outliers and remove while the third one is the summary of the, uh, the test uh, the GRUPS test or the route method. So, let us have a mini reflection point here inspect this data set it is again it's a screenshot from the graph pad prism and then uh, can you choose or decide an appropriate outlier test. If you wish you may pause the window uh, you know the video right now and come back after some time. Well as you can see in this data set it has got only one outlier. So to know is it really an outlier or not perhaps I will go with the grubs test. Well, you can also go with route method if you are unsure. So, route method will also work for if to detect one outlier or multiple outliers. So, route method is advantageous. So, in summary, outliers are extraordinarily high or low value in the normally distributed data set. So, it is pertinent only for the normally distributed data sets. Outliers might arise due to several reasons including mere chance, a mistake either during the experiment or during the data entry or because the distribution is not really Gaussian. So, our assumption that the distribution is Gaussian is wrong. It should be noted that the outlier should never be removed from the lab notebook date or you know of course, you should never remove from the, the lab notebook or the lab archive, the digital uh, uh, repository where you upload your raw data in it. So, even the publication should be clearly stated that how many outliers were removed from the data set and the criterion to identify the outliers or any test used should be clearly specified in the publication. For example, if you write an MSc a project or a PhD thesis or if you publish a paper out of it in a peer reviewed journal, you have to specify it, you know, so how many outliers have been removed. Before even performing an outlier test, you know it is prudent to discount other possibilities of the ROG reading including the mistakes in the data entry, experiment or biological variability. So, biological variability is extremely important you know. So, it could be truly interesting finding uh, who knows. So, you, you know you should definitely look these outliers. Remember uh, what I told you about the ozone hole uh, detection. So, outliers are maybe Sometimes the outliers are a lot more interesting than uh, the, the usual readings. 
suspected outlier should never be manually removed ad hoc outlier removal or to, to get what the result that you want is cheating while post hoc removal as part of the experimental design is not so post hoc uh, you know the outlier removal is uh, permissible in statistical analysis to detect one outlier grubs test is recommended while to detect two or more route method is preferred but in one sense route method is having more advantage than the grubs test so you can always go with the route method please also note that there are companion videos on the gra uh, the graph pad prism training so watch that video so how to perform the outlier test inside the graph pad prism i hope you enjoyed it i will see you again in the next module thank you